Newness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings, a hope and trust. I find you well, my dear friends. We have one more mountain experience as we start our working week. And our devotional title is No One is 100% Evil. I'll take that again. No One is 100% Evil as inspired by the song of the bow. Come with me to 2 Samuel. We are at chapter 1 and we begin reading at verse 17. It reads as follows. David sang the following lament for Saul and his son Jonathan. And he ordered that the Judahites be taught the song of the bow. It is written in the book of Jashar. The splendor of Israel lies slain on your heights. How the mighty have fallen. Do not tell it in Gath. Don't announce it in the marketplaces of Ashkelon. Or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice and the daughters of the uncircumcised will gloat. Skip to verse 21. Mountains of Gilboa, let no dew or rain be on you. O field of offerings, for there the shield of the mighty was defiled. The shield of Saul no longer anointed with oil. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we spend a moment in prayer. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the song of the bow that speaks to our workplaces, speaks to our relations with our superiors. Oh, dear Lord, give us these lessons for our understanding for by your word we want to be instructed. For by your word we want to be redeemed. This is our prayer of faith in Jesus' name. We pray and we ask, Amen. My good friends, as the custom is, why don't we raise five quick points before we say our goodbyes. At point number one, what does the song of the boar talk about? It is a dirge, a funeral lament of Saul and Jonathan. At point number one, learn to esteem those who hate, persecute, and revile you. For when David speaks of Saul, he refers to him by saying, how are the mighty fallen? In spite of how your superior treats you, may he or she remain mighty in your mind. Do not think any less of them. Christ actually adds more to this and says, Pray for those who persecute you. Let them hate you. Let them be the ones who are after you. But at no point should they become your enemy. Have people hate you, but do not have enemies. Have people who are hunting after you, but they, let them not become your enemies. At point number two, never celebrate the fall of your oppressor with an outsider. This is a no, 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 no. You'll notice that David says, do not go out and talk about this in Gath. Gath was the capital city of the Philistine territory. Do not talk about this in Ashkelon. Do not even talk about it in the marketplaces, even on social media. Do not talk about the fall of those who are not doing well by your books. That is not the Christian thing to do. You do not celebrate the fall of those who have been your victimizers. You do not celebrate the fall of those who have been your oppressors. And as such, David announces this and he says, you will not discuss this or announce it or herald it in the marketplace. That is not your place. Especially when you are going to cause the unbeliever to celebrate and gloat over the fall of a child of God. That cannot be excused. It is inexcusable. At point number three, listen to this. The misdeeds of those in leadership do not take away their anointing. Only death can take that away. Why do I say so? Listen to what uh, David says at the end of verse 21. He says, mountains of Gilboa, let no Jew or rain be on you. Why? Because the mighty was defiled. Underscore, the shield of Saul no longer anointed with oil. 
He may have been impure. He may have had an evil heart, but his shield remained anointed until he died. Anything that an anointed one of the Lord does remains holy until he dies. His misdeed does not reverse the anointing. His misdeed does not take away his purity. All that he does remains commissioned of heaven. And at point number four, our subject line, no one is 100% evil. Even if your boss is the soul type, you will always find something good in someone. Come with me to verse number 23. It says, Saul and Jonathan loved and delightful. They were not parted in life or in death. They were swifter than eagles and stronger than lions. God bless the reading of his word. Your boss may be nasty, but that doesn't mean he's not a good father to his Jonathan. That doesn't mean he's, he, he's a, she's a bad mother to him, Mary. This is your boss, nasty at work, but a pleasant parent. And David takes time to highlight that even though this man did not even like the shadow that is cast by my body. He still was a good father. And secondly, even though he was my nemesis, we were at loggerheads. He hunted me from cave to cave, from mountain to valley. But even then, when you look at his pros, this man was as swift as an eagle, as strong as a lion. He was a strategist par excellence. We may differ with those who are more superior than we are, but let this not shroud and even cover our understanding and appreciation that some people are talented. They may not like your face, but acknowledge if they are talented. Acknowledge if they are fast. Acknowledge if they are strong. A child of God will be objective about that, which is straightforward. And I want to repeat this and even emphasize it. No one is 100% evil. The best of fathers may make the nastiest of bosses. The best of mothers can become the worst of bosses. And even the best of strategists can become the worst of supervisors and the other way around. This does not mean they are 100% evil. Take time to look at it objectively. You are going to find that there is something good in them after all. And at point number five, as we climax, notice this at verse number 24. The fact that someone is not good to you, it does not mean they are equally bad or nasty to the next person. You have your own beef. Do not make it about the whole community. Do not make it about the whole nation. And David leads by example in the song of the ball at verse 24. Daughters of Israel, weep for soul. Why? This is the soul who clothes you in scarlet with luxurious things, who decked your garments with gold ornaments. Some things are just good. Some people are good to other people, but not to you in that particular time. Even then, acknowledge that they are still a good person. What am I saying unto you? As we part, go out and seek the good in other people. For no one is 100% evil, even if they are so. They have a good part. And the song of the bow, no wonder it is not known. No wonder it is not preached about because we do not want to accept that some people are good. We want to pray for their demise and unexpected end. But yet David has spoken unto us, there is something good even in soul. Until you meet again, may God bless and prosper you. Amen. Amen.